Hello, fifth grade. It is Mrs. Bierman here with our second part of our Grand Canyon Suite project. So this is the project that we're doing in, um, in school, and we are watching and listening to some different uh, movements from the Grand Canyon Suite by Ferde Graffet. So you should have already completed the sunrise portion of this project or of this culmination of projects. And today we're going to start by creating the painted desert. So I encourage you to watch the slideshow that goes with this project so you can see different images of the Grand Canyon. You're going to see the different colors of rock that you will see the Colorado River has cut through to create these different layers and different strips of color in the different types of rock. Um, you will also see some of the wildlife that you may find in the Grand Canyon. You will see colors of the plants that are alive down there, a lot of cactus, cacti. Uh, you'll see the colors of some of the greenery. You'll see the trail. You'll see um, pictures of the river that runs through, but I definitely encourage you to look at it for color. But most of all, I encourage you to look at it for the different shapes of the horizon lines, the different edges of the, of the rock that's been cut through, the plateaus that kind of level off through the Grand Canyon. Um, so you can um, create those too. And of course, listen to that piece of music, Painted Desert. So that is another piece, uh, another attachment to this assignment. So you're going to listen, you're going to respond for Mrs. Buckman to look at, and then you'll be creating the art piece. This is one that takes a little bit longer, so I wouldn't try to do it all at once. Um, it'll take you probably about an hour total, maybe even a little bit more if you're working really carefully. But let's get started. So you're going to need a nine by 12, piece of paper. I chose kind of a heavier piece of paper. It's a drawing piece um, because we are going to add some watercolor paint to it a little bit later. Um, and then you're going to need either crayons, colored pencils, or um, oil pastels for this. That's your choice. For the next step, we'll get into a little bit of watercolor, but let's get started here. So the first thing that we looked at for this project, we wanted to make sure we had our lines for our foreground, middle ground, and background. So I'm going to start about a quarter of the way up my paper, and I'm going to bring a line down to near the front of my paper. So it's at a slight slant. That's going to be my foreground area. And then I'm going to bring another, another line up. This time I'm going again about a quarter of an inch or four fingers up from my bottom line. And I'm going to bring that over, slanting it until it touches my first line. So now I have a foreground area, a middle ground area, and now I'm ready to create some of those lines from the canyon itself. So what you're going to do is you're going to, you can look at some of the examples that I will post, but you're going to look at some of the different pictures of the Grand Canyon and you should be able to see some different plateaus um, that were formed as the river cut through this canyon over millions of years. Um, so please make sure you look at that and you look at all the dis the interesting shapes that you may see that go through it. Um, he, in school, I made the kids do four different plateau areas. So now I have one, two, three, and I'm going to do one more. So mine are overlapping a little bit. You'll see in some of the examples that there is no overlapping. There's a space left in between, but this should work for me pretty well. Um, you can also um, create a river that's running through it. If you want to, you can leave these empty. You could create a trail. There are trails that run through down into the canyon and along the ground. Um, I'm going to create mine, I guess, maybe as a river. So I'm going to create it skinny towards the back, and it gradually gets a little bit thicker, and then it goes behind my foreground. So when it comes out, it's going to come out a little bit a different area. It scooches over a little bit and it gets wider there at the bottom. So that will be my river running through it. 
I'm not going to show you a whole lot of coloring. Um, just take a peek at some of those finished ones that I posted um, and you'll get some different ideas. But I want you to pull colors of crayons or oil pastels that you may see in the Grand Canyon itself. Our crayons at school, we have quite a few more different colors, but you'll notice that I'm pulling some of my warm colors. Um, I could pull some black or gray, I guess. Um, maybe I'll do a combination and I will pull some oil pastels as well. Um, so these ones will all work for my Grand Canyon. Um, some of the kids chose some yellows and more reds in there. Um, some of them just stuck to all different browns. That's going to be up to you. But what you're going to do is if you're using crayons or colored pencils, you're going to start creating some horizontal strips of color. Now I encourage you to press pretty hard when you do this. And I also encourage you to have different thicknesses. So I'm sticking with this first color um, and I'm going to create some different areas with just this brown so that I can then put it away for a little bit or I can um, go on to one of my other plateau areas. But I'm just going in here and creating some different layers of color. Once I finish with that color, I'm going to move in there with another um, another color and I'm going to make sure that again I do some different thicknesses of that color. You can be pretty random about it. Um, you really don't want to have like a perfect pattern by any means. Um, so don't go in there with like an AB pattern like brown gold, brown gold, brown gold over and over. You do want it to be a little bit more sporadic. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that and I'm going to keep filling up those areas um, until my whole plateau is filled. This is not a very smooth table that I'm working on. I hope yours is smoother than mine. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go in there and finish that right up. Finish all those areas with color. Like this and this. There we go. And then I do have some more space here. I don't want to, I mean, I think you got the hang of this. Um, I don't think I need to show you all of this, but I'm going to go in there and add some more stripes of color. I think you get the idea, right? But please feel free um, to use whichever warm colors you'd like to use. Uh, you would see some reds, some golds, some oranges, and browns in the canyon itself. Um, the only thing I'm going to ask you not to color with crayons or oil pastels is the sky. So when you're ready to move on to the land area, there's not a lot of grass and greenery. Um, it is more like a desert landscape. So when I go to color this, I am sticking with my um, natural colors, my neutral colors. But do try to get at least two colors in each area. You can overlap them um, for a different, oh, I don't like that color very much, but I'm stuck with it right now. I might go over it with some brown. I'm sorry for the noise of this bumpy table. It's not very smooth. All right, I'm gonna go in there with some peach, I guess, and see what happens. All right, that makes it a little bit less harsh, I think. So I've gone in there with that. I can go in there with my brown oil pastel maybe and blend that a little bit better. Um, but yeah, each one of those areas um, do try to get at least two colors for me. So I've gotten my browns and my golds and my peaches. Just trying, whoops. Just trying to do some different areas here. Yeah, not my favorite. I 
think I preferred the crayons, but I didn't have great colors. And then also you can color your path or your river. You can do that with the colors as well. Um, if you are working with oil pastels, feel free to blend with your fingers. Um, you can also blend with a tissue or paper towel, although that seems to not work quite as well. Fingers really work best for this. Um, or actually, if you have any baby oil at your house and a little Q-tip, that actually does the best blending for oil pastels. But you can go in there and you can blend them together with your finger. I don't love how that feels on my finger, but you can do it. Okay. Um, so once you have that done, you're all done with part one. So stay tuned for part two, and I'll show you how to finish up your painted desert. All right. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.